Hey folks, this is Buddy. Buddy loves food more than anything else. He can't help but dance for it. He's my mom and dad's dog, which means he lives in Canada. And right now I'm in Cambodia, a long way to go to play with a dog. I miss him, so I decided I'm going to make a virtual buddy using Scratch so I can play with him from anywhere. Scratch is an awesome way to learn about coding or computer programming. You can use it to make your own games. It's free and easy to use. If you want to follow along and make your own virtual pet, you can open Scratch in the new tab and follow along with my videos. In part one, we're going to get everything set up. You're going to need a Scratch account for this, which is free and easy to make. If you're a kid, you'll need some help from your parents to add their email address when you sign up. Maybe they want to learn how to code too. Once you log into your Scratch account, it's time to start creating. We'll save the coding for later. Today we're going to learn about backdrops and sprites. Virtual pets might not be quite as fun as a real pet, but they're a lot less responsibility too. We can add in sprites or interactable objects that the pets can play with inside of our games. Like, maybe we want to add some food for them to munch. Time, time, time. We can have a ball that they can chase. Maybe they need to get some exercise. We could put in a trampoline for those pets to bounce on. Five times. Boing, 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 boing. Making these sprites interactable objects inside of a game isn't very difficult. This is Scratch the Cat. Scratch the Cat is a sprite but we're not making a virtual Scratch the Cat, so we're gonna delete Scratch from this game. We can go down and right click on him in the Sprite section and choose Delete. We wanna add in a new Sprite. You can browse the Sprite's library, there's lots of cool stuff, but I wanna upload my own picture of Buddy so I can make a custom Sprite just for my pet. When I put the picture up there though, it has a background and that doesn't look good for a Sprite. We're going to need to use the eraser tool to erase the background around Buddy the dog to give him a nice clean look and I can just see the dog. That'll make a great sprite. When you choose the eraser tool, it's going to start off pretty big. And as you erase, it will reveal the checkered background. That means it's transparent. Around the dog will be invisible and that'll allow him to stand out really nice against a backdrop of my choosing. So, as you go and erase, you might need to shrink the eraser size down to get in and do those finer little details and make it look really good. After I finish cleaning up Buddy and making it look pretty nice, I'm going to duplicate his sprite by going up and right clicking on his costume. This makes two versions of the Buddy costume because I want to get a little bit creative and I want to make one with his mouth open and his mouth closed. To do that, I'm going to select a piece of his fur with my mouse and then I'm going to copy with Control c or Command c on Mac and then paste with Control v or Command v on a, a Mac and then I can put that into his mouth and it makes it almost look like his mouth is closed. Sure, sure, I get it. It looks a little messy now. But after I manage to do the copying and pasting, I'm going to shrink his sprite down a little bit. And we'll notice that once he's shrunken, it's a lot harder to tell that I was just copying and pasting fur into his mouth. This is a fun way for me to be able to make him open and close his mouth later for eating and barking. Now that I've copied and pasted the fur into his mouth and I have two costumes, I can use the shrink tool to shrink him down. Alright, that's a good size for Buddy. It's time to go and see what he'll look like with a backdrop behind him. I clicked on the stage and the backdrop section in the corner and that allows me to choose from the new backdrops. Now I'm just going to choose a backdrop from the library and there's lots of really awesome backdrops already included in Scratch that you can choose from. I'm going to go with the castle backdrop because it's a lot like where Buddy really lives so I think that he'll like that a lot. There we go. Now I can see that Buddy's transparent background makes him look like he's a dog right there in this castle in this forest. 
He looks great with that transparent background behind him, but I'm going to switch to the closed mouth costume for this next step. We're going to need to go and put in some sound effects. The pop sound effect is the one that it starts with, but I need a dog sound. I'm going to click on the speaker to browse through the sounds library and choose the dog bark sound effect. All right, now for the last step, the coding. All code starts with an event. In this case, we're going to use when the sprite is clicked so that we can click on Buddy and make him do some things. The first thing I want him to do is switch to his open mouth costume. So I'm going to put in one line of code that says switch costume to Buddy, the first costume's name. Check it out. Buddy and Buddy 2, closed and open mouths. After he switches to the open mouth costume, I want him to play the dog bark sound effect until it's finished. So that'll be my next instruction, my next line of code. And finally, close his mouth again after he's finished barking. I'm going to switch his costume back to Buddy 2. Now, with this little bit of code, I can make Buddy bark. That's all the coding I'm going to do for today. There's tons more you can do with a virtual pet like this, so just look forward to the next video, and I'm going to show you how that we can add in some more sprites and code them, just like in my earlier example, so that our virtual pet can have different names, different activities like playing a ball game, bouncing on a trampoline, eating snacks, running to his house, all of that fun stuff. All of this is done by giving instructions to the computer. Coding! And coding is something that can allow us to make all our games, animations, and things really come to life. So it's a great skill to practice. I'm not an expert, but I do like to have fun trying to build things like virtual pets. If you're interested in learning more about Scratch, or looking forward to my next video, or maybe you have some ideas about learning coding in your own way, you could share them in the comments below. Until then, thanks so much for watching. I'm looking forward to doing part two. Bye for now.